So you're thinking about moving to Fort Lauderdale, but you aren't really sure what to expect? Well, in this video, we're gonna go over five things about living in Fort Lauderdale that you really need to consider before deciding to move here. Because honestly, Fort Lauderdale isn't right for everybody, and the last thing you wanna do is make that move only to realize that you hate it here. So let's get into it. What's up everyone, it's Tanner back at you with another video and if this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living here in sunny South Florida, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and tap the little bell so you get notified every time I do a new video. And people are reaching out to me every single day from all over the US and even other countries and I absolutely love it. So if you're even thinking about moving or relocating here to Fort Lauderdale or anywhere here in South Florida, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, a message on Facebook. Facebook, however you want to get a hold of me, I'd love to talk to you and help you however I can. So number five on the list is something that I talked about in my pros and cons video, and if you haven't seen it yet, it's right up here, but we're going to talk about the weather. Here in Fort Lauderdale, the weather is pretty hot all year round. I mean, even in January, which is our coldest month, our average low temperatures at night are almost 60 degrees, and although it's great to be able to go to the beach on Christmas, the summers can be absolutely brutal. Starting in June and going all the way through September, average temperatures can be around 90 degrees, and that's not even taking into account for humidity, which it will likely make that feel closer to 100 degrees outside. Also, a lot of the heat can be regulated with air conditioning in your car and in your home, but if you're planning on having a job that requires you to be outside a lot, like construction, agriculture, landscaping, transportation, industries like that, you're not going to be able to escape the heat and it's going to be something that you're really going to want to consider because you're going to be dealing with the heat on a daily basis. So number four is lifestyle. If you're planning on moving to Fort Lauderdale for a slow paced lifestyle with no hustle and bustle and no crowds, Fort Lauderdale probably isn't gonna be for you because let's face it, almost half of Fort Lauderdale's jobs are in the hospitality, tourism, retail, and food service industries. And it's probably no surprise that Florida is the number one visited state in the US. Last year alone, over 133 million visitors came to Florida. And although it is a lot less crowded than South Beach and Miami, Fort Lauderdale always has something going on. From spring break to concerts to sporting events, there's never a dull moment here. But if you're looking for a little bit of a quieter, slow paced vibe, there are a lot of neighboring cities just outside of Fort Lauderdale that offer that. So check out this video up here and learn a little bit about those cities. Moving on to number three, and this kind of goes hand in hand with tourism because we do get so many visitors down here and that's the traffic. Man, if you aren't used to the traffic down here, it's probably gonna be a bit overwhelming and even scary to deal with the first few times. And actually autowise.com even ranked Florida the official home of the horrible driver. And I contribute it to a combination of so many different types of driving styles because a lot of people are transplants from other states and other countries and it just doesn't tend to mesh well together. Now, if you couple that with a ton of tourists that don't know where they're going and some elderly people going 20 miles an hour when the speed limit's 45 and things tend to get pretty interesting. So if you aren't a fan of driving in the first place or you're a naturally angry person, this might be a big deal for you. Number two is the cost of housing. Now I go really deep into the overall cost of living in Fort Lauderdale in that video up there, but for this video, I'm gonna specifically talk about housing costs because chances are no matter where you choose to live, housing is gonna be your biggest expense and Fort Lauderdale isn't cheap. Your more affordable options like small studio apartments are gonna start somewhere in the $900 range, which is great if you're single, but if you're planning on moving down here with a family or need something bigger like a three bedroom place, you're gonna be looking around $1,500 on the low end, but the average rent is gonna be around $2,000 per month. And keep in mind, Florida has over 330,000 people moving to the state every year. So the demand for housing is high, which is why it's not uncommon to see your rent increase anywhere from five to 10% every year. And for this reason, it makes sense for a lot of people to buy a home instead of rent. So if you're considering buying in Fort Lauderdale, you can find condos for as little as about $70,000, but your average price for a single family, three bedroom home is gonna be a little over $500,000. But like I said earlier, there are a lot more affordable cities that are very nice just outside of Fort Lauderdale that still offer easy access to downtown and the beach. So don't let those numbers scare you. 
All right, that brings us to number one, and we're gonna talk about the schools in Fort Lauderdale. If you're moving down here with the family or you're planning on having children in the future, this is probably gonna be one of the most important things to consider. And although Florida schools don't have the best reputation, and it's true, there are some pretty low scoring schools here in Florida, but that's not the case for the entire state. Fort Lauderdale actually has six public schools that rank seven out of 10 or higher. But the important thing is to know what the attendance zones are for these top public schools. And also, if you're willing to enroll your children in private school, there are a ton of options for that too, but it can get pretty expensive depending on which one you choose. So if you're thinking about moving or relocating here to South Florida and you have any questions about the schools or anything else that I mentioned in this video, I'd love to talk to you in depth and answer any questions that you have. So give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, a message on Facebook, however you want to get a hold of me, because I got your back when moving to Fort Lauderdale.